Alexander Mitin. I work at an association as a senior software developer, engineer, and I'm doing the VM stuff. Uh, this year we released a new VM, and yesterday John O'Keefe revealed some duck on the side of it. So today in my talk I will show you the darkest one. So, uh, sorry. And here is our new VM runtime. It supports 62-bit version. 62. Oh yeah, 64. <laughs> Excuse me. 32 and 64. I am Russian. I can't confuse English words. I hope you understand. And the entire VM has been written from scratch. And uh, perhaps besides of some small pieces like helpers, not much. Uh, the main two goals were compatibility and performance. Uh, again, uh, John O'Keefe, yes, in his yesterday talk, demonstrated you how compatible the VM is to the old versions. You just load your old image and you are done. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> okay, and the, the next main goal is the performance. So we are a commercial vendor, vendor and we have to satisfy commercial quality commercial quality, yeah. So to achieve this, we use LLVM as our core technology. Uh, but first, let me turn to do some retrospective. Uh, and how our first prototype were, was implemented. We call it a traditional way. So usually, such kind of virtual machine implemented in C or C++, and it has, for example, interpreter as a huge case statement. I even do not talk about primitive, primitive methods. They are also usually included in that case. Not exactly a case, but, you know. And if your compiler supports computed go-tos, it is just a bunch of labels. Well, that works, but still, in spite of the modern compilers, could provide very sophisticated optimizations, there are still a lot of overheat. And this is an extra memory operations. And uh, you can you can go to one scope using function call return back and align the result, depending on the go to another place and so on. It worked. Uh, yes. So, the main theme of the main disadvantage of implementing it in a pure C or C++ is that the compile uh, is that support for JIT engine is becomes complicated. You need trampolines to JIT code. You need landing pads back. And it is complicated and error prone. So, uh, we did some optimization to that VM implemented in C. We provided, um, we tried to use a continuation Python style to get rid of analyzing results. This works as well and even more performant but not enough. Uh, uh, 
Okay. What else? What would what could we do? What could we do? Yeah. Our old VM has been implemented a long time years ago, and nobody really touched that magic chest. Just a few fingerprints on it, just for fixing critical bugs. There are actually uh, not much of them. Was. And uh, another option is to use assembly code, assembly language. Well, that could work, uh, but we need a lot of platforms to support. So having every platform implemented on its own assembly language is bad. I think it's obvious. The, you have, uh, for example, Well, um, there are a lot of them, actually. <laughs> so, one more option is to develop a special language for building the VM. Uh, programming for programming is uh, fun, but this is not an option as, at all. So, C is not suitable. We need to go deeper. And Let's see how the C compiler typical looks like. It's the very first stage, stages of compiler. Compiling is a front end. The three one called back end. So we just do not need through the front end. It bounds us <coughs> binds us to C language syntax, AB, ABI, and the front end generates, machine generates, intermediate representation. It is not optimized really. It's not optimized at all. And it is possible to use intermediate representation by the hand. So you just write it in the intermediate language. So LLVM is the solution. It is a mature compiler infrastructure which is suitable to build compilers with different front ends like C, C++, D, Swift, and many others. And um, we do not need those front ends. We need the advanced intermediate representation. We need to get the code, the code which it generates as an object file to get it linked. I will get back to that later. And also, this project, as I already mentioned, it is mature and it is open source and has a big community. And also it's compatible for um, JIT engine, to be a JIT engine. So how we did our current version? This is... so. The VM critical parts written in LLVM intermediate language entirely, except memory manager. Primitive methods, interpreter, all written in LLVM intermediate language. So every byte code, for example, for interpreter, every byte code handler is a function. Every primitive method is a function. Other internal parts of the VM is a function. Also, it is possible to fine-tune the code which we wrote in LLVM intermediate language. It's possible to fine-tune uh, 
by using LLVM intrinsics, for example, for block copying, for memory movement, and use attributes like branch weights. So this branch we expect to go through, and that one puts uh, the end of the function. Uh, so this minimizes overhead because we write LLVM codes as it, we want it to be. Nothing more. So LLVM, uh, we can omit a couple of optimization passes which LLVM has because we Reads, we, we wrote the code which as it want as it should be. No need to optimize it. And uh, that's why JIT transitions, JIT and interpreter transition became transparent. Actually, there are no such transitions. I'll get back to it later. So it's time to see an example. I hope you can read it. It is a simple byte code. Um, I think it is a good example. It is a simple byte code which, e, which has a byte code operand, byte code itself, and it's operand. It just pushes, pushes it it's operant to stack slot, to the next stack slot. So it just advances program counter, gets the operant, allocated stack slot, pushes it, get, gets next bytecode, and runs the next bytecode handler. Notice that this is a call. So, <laughs> but before we go to LLVM intermediate representation, <laughs> let me introduce you uh, with uh, how it goes, this LLVM. So, LLVM uh, has a main logical structure, is a module. It's roughly speaking, it's an object file. And it contains functions and probably some data which could be accessed on a global level. We don't use it. We didn't use it. Uh, so every function contains uh, from one contains of one or more basic block blocks. Basic block is a logical structure which represents a stride code flow. Each, every basic block should be terminated by some uh, instruction, special instruction. They call it terminating instruction, uh, which passes the execution flow to another basic block. So transitions between basic blocks within function uh, are done using such terminating instruction. It is a branch, branching? No way. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I was about terminating instruction. So it is re function return, um, conditional return, I mean, go else or else, one block or another. There are two of them, which could be execution flow, transit, transit, di directed, yeah. And uh, instructions, instructions in LLVM inter inter intermediate language is in single static assignment form. This means that there are no variables. It's just the values which are a result of LLVM instruction. It's complicated things a little. 
for example, it's a little hard to get a loop. There are no loops, just transitions between basic blocks. Yeah. Okay, this is a crash course. I think it's enough. <laughs> uh, well, so it's too small, I think. So this is a pre uh, this is a representation of that byte, co byte code in an LVM interpreted language, intermediate language. Excuse me. So notes that there is still the call, but the world tail. And that. Yes, I think you are aggressive now. So let's look how we did it so that previous form is not so convenient to develop. So used to be, to use it as a thing which we can every day work with. All right, so we used a LLVM C++ API and hit it beyond functions, C++ methods. So we get it convenient. So that previous bytecode becomes just a few lines. Get next operand, push it on the stack, execute next bytecode. Note that it is not an actual code which would be executed. It is a description how to generate the actual code. And it is more human readable, I guess, right? So what's the result? The result is just a few instructions. Not much of them, actually. They could be better, but it's enough. <laughs> okay, so it's we load by code parent from program counter, so it into the slat slog, advanced stand pointer, get by code, advanced program counter by two. Not two instructions, but one. And then get next byte code, and here we can see a jump. This is actually a call site. So the idea is, as I think you all are guessed. The idea is optimization, tail call, elimination, elimination optimization. Tail call functions, I think all, everybody knows what it is. So, and the next critical thing is to keep uh, critical data in registers. We keep their VM context in registers. We keep the program counter, we keep the stack pointer, and frame pointer. All those are small talk registers, logical registers. And to achieve the, all of this, we have to, well, LLVM itself is very sophisticated, and it is capable to uh, apply tail call elimination optimization without, out of the box. But we need another one. We need to keep critical data in registers. So we introduce our own so-called LLVM calling convention, uh, in which we pinned lots of registers to VM registers. LLVM is free to spill those registers if it needs to, it's needed to be, to do, yeah. And that's it. It just works. So let's see how we execute a small talk method in interpreted mode. There is a function and actually it is a jump target. Those three arguments, it's just an example. It is simplified pseudocode. Uh, I simplified, there are more arguments actually. Uh, but the, this amount is limited, of course. There could be not, no more than five, I guess. I don't remember. <laughs> 
So we just allocate a stack frame and jump to the next target, which is a bytecode handler. LLVM does that job for us. That's cool. And how the native code looks like. This is the same. Just different stack frame allocated, and it goes to execute JIT generated code in line. That's perfect. Okay, I'm running out of time. Excuse me. Uh, it is JIT, gen JIT generate, generated. JIT code it. This is yeah, a JIT I'm code. What, what, who calls whom here? Uh, it is a jump target just from any oh, it's dispatch small point. Small talk. It could be a small talk. It could be a native uh, FFI code. Well, yeah, that, it is small talk for simplifying things. So it's small talk to small talk? Yes. It, it's, a, it's a send volume extract? Yes. Okay. So send is just like looking up that pointer, set, setting up arguments, and jump. Mm -hmm. So this is the send. I, I'll omit things like inline caches and so on, so to simplify things. OK, I'm running out of time and uh, a lot of things to discuss, but let me do it in a few words. So. Memory Manager has been written from scratch as well, as, as well, sorry. And it is written in C, so it is suitable to be in C. And algorithm is the same as it was in previous version, but it's ready for modifications. We can provide a better algorithm later. Uh, a few words about how it Build, how we build it. So the build system is CMake based, and uh, developers could free to could could use their favorite IDE. We do not restrict it. And uh, for C part, we use min GW64 or GCC for Linux compiler, and we compile a little VM code, the code which generates LLVM, and then run this application, it produces an object file, and this, that object file then linked within other objects, file, object files using the standard uh, GCC linker. That's it. What part do you compile with uh uh, C compiler and why not everything in LLVM? Can you compile everything in LLVM? Or is it to reuse all the C code? Or I'm not sure I follow, excuse me. What's the question? Okay. You have a special app yes. that is LLVM IR. Yes. It contains LLVM IR. And can you do everything with that? I mean, do you still need C? Why, like, why is our GC not written in LLVM? Oh, oh yeah, it's it's a lot of work. Okay. <laughs> Actually, you like it, you know. so, so it's, it's only because you have available C code that you are still using. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, we could do this, but it is not necessary. So, memory manager, for example, is happy to live in C world. So it's, that's enough for performance uh, questions. The, 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 the binary code that GCC or MinGW64 generates is good enough. I mean, the, the, maybe the, 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 I don't know, maybe the LLVM uh, code generator could do faster uh, code for the memory manager. I don't know. Just, yeah. yeah. So we use a little VM for performance purposes and uh, for a future. For a future is Unicode support. That's the first. Uh, the next one is alternative memory manager, perhaps with parallel garbage collection, perhaps what 
Theo don't present it <laughs> today. <laughs> we don't know yet. And uh, we considering to use OMR framework as well, an alternative JIT engine. OMR framework is what powers IBM's J9 uh, Java virtual machine. It is under the hood of it. It's more lightweight that, than LLVM. For example, in LLVM we do not need things like exceptions, supports, or whatever. And you probably noticed that in and in the end assembly code, there are no using of machine stack point register. LLVM does not allow to rule it directly. So it's a lot of work. And then the last one is compressed ordinary object pointer. Sometimes it's not necessary to. This will reduce the header of the object. So that's it. Questions? Oh yeah, it was a pain. <laughs> it is a special primitive hand in that, primitive method, hand in that. So it is implemented in LLVM intermediate language as, as well. So it works fine. Okay, will that be affected when you go to using the stack point? Will you have to do it differently? Uh, we shall see, I'm not sure for now. Yes. Yeah, um, now that you have 64, uh, did you take advantage of flagging or getting some bits to flag with objects like... Uh, not yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet. It's, we, we can do this later because it requires a lot of work to image, for image. Yeah, yeah, sure. We will do this. Okay. I should mention it in a future work. Yes, I think. Uh, what is the compressed OP? Uh, OP, it, it is, stands for Ordinary Object no, no, Pointer. What is compressed? For example, uh, Object Header has Class Pointer in it. It, to do it in 64-bit version, the class pointer increases. So we just increase the memory consumption. So compressed OPs is to have object headers data as 32 bits to make sure that it does not exceed that boundary and make sure that's it. So that turns more into like an index rather yeah, than... Yeah, 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 yeah. that's it. Yeah. Boris? Uh, yeah, I actually have so many questions that I don't even know which ones to select, but I'll try. I, I, I think the most interesting one is uh, there was a slide where you were uh, talking about that, that, well, because LLVM has built in, and this is what, how I understand it, right? Because the, the LLVM has already built in uh, cross-function optimization so that, that, that this is not a problem. Uh, but still, um, I, I did a number of uh, attempts at uh, re, uh, reusing other uh, compiler infrastructures. And uh, one problem that, that, that became a stumbling block that I could never uh, overcome is that in small talk, because the bytecodes, they are stack oriented, basically it is really, um, like how do you go from uh, this stack oriented semantics of the bytecode to uh, something that say LLVM can, can do a register allocation on, right? Like normally, the, the normal LLVM, right, mm -hmm. because it's register-based, yes. you say, oh, 
okay, well, my, my uh, data are in register this, 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 and this, and then uh, because it's, it operates on these abstract registers, yes. uh, it can do graph coloring and coalescing and all of that stuff. I was never able, and, and like, for example, Dalvik, right, what they do is, is they take the Java bytecode and they statically rewrite it to a set of bytecode that operates on, on, on that. But if the Smalltalk image is all bytecode, Yes. I mean, it's, it's probably too slow to, to dynamically translate from a stack-oriented bytecode to a register-oriented bytecode. And so how do, you, how do you go from bytecodes to a form that the LLVMIR can uh, swallow and, and do a register allocation on? Are you speaking about jitted code? I'm speaking about jitted code, yes. Well, we just... Uh, <laughs> Translate, uh, we reuse that code which I displayed, demonstrated in LLVM, yes. yes. And LLVM does its job for us. We, we do not do something special about it. If it sees stack operation, yes. for example, it's, if it sees push and immediately pop, yes. it just throws it out. It's pretty sophisticated. It yes. It is nothing more than a memory operation for, for LLVM. We are not using this machine stack pointer. It's mm -hmm. not possible in LLVM. This is a disadvantage. But this is enough for our purposes. The VM is performing. Uh, I'm sorry about <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>